Hi, I'm Tiglini Hahn and this is my busy garden. So if you're wondering about the title, somebody last week complained that they were too long, so I thought I'd shorten them this week. But of course in doing so, I'm actually taking up a lot of time explaining why I had to shorten them in the first place, which kind of defeats the purpose of shortening them anyway. Right, now to all those people who said, ooh, ooh, earwigs, they're lovely and beneficial for your garden, Tiddly, don't hurt them. Let's just see how beneficial they've been to my cauliflowers, shall we? I don't think that looks very beneficial. Nor that, or that, or any of these. So I've got about four or five cauliflower plants which are clinging on to life of the original 12 I planted. So I'm going to protect what I've got left with some powerful chemicals. This is permethrin, it's not particularly good for the environment, and if you don't like it, talk to the hand, because the tiddly ain't listening. It looks like my sunset apples have decided to pick themselves. So maybe I should give them a helping hand. Not bad. Two and a half kilos of sunset apples. I beg your pardon? I've no idea what that is, but it just made that the most horrendous screeching noise. The russets are choosing to stay on the tree for the time being. By the way, there's a lovely smell around here. And I don't know whether you've noticed, but my alisum are really in bloom and giving off this fabulous aroma. I'll definitely be planting those again next year. My roses are in bloom again at the moment, and so's this poppy. I think it's a bit confused. But I do need to trim back some of these runners because they've gone a bit mad, Ted. Oh yes, that's much better. It'll do until it's time for a proper prune. Seems to have been a pretty good year for roses, really. I don't know whether it's just my experience. The strange weather that we've had. Now then, a couple of interesting things happened to me this week. I'll tell you about the first one first, because I know it will amuse you. Guess what? I was contacted by not one, but two network channels telling me how fabulous they were and how much I could benefit from joining them. The amusing thing was that one of them was a network from India who contacted me twice this week and have already contacted me in the past so I gave them exactly the same answers I'd given them before. Obviously they think I have a short-term memory problem. One of them was from India. In fact they contacted me twice and they've contacted me before, so I gave them the same answers they've given before. They must think I've got a short-term memory problem. Anyway, the other one was a Los Angeles-based network who were telling me that they had this advertiser who was going to run a big advertising campaign and how it may fit the demographic of my channel and blah, 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 blah. So I sent them back a very short and simple answer. And he simply said this, quote, I'm like so totally not interested, unquote. They haven't contacted me back, so I think they got the message. Now the other thing that happened, in fact it was last weekend, was to tell this story I have to go back a little bit. I'm actually a member of the local voluntary organisation. So I do little bits and pieces around the, the town. And when our organisation thought they'd set up a website, I volunteered to do it. My way of doing some voluntary time. And uh, last weekend I was contacted by the chairman of the trustees of the voluntary organisation. And he said, uh, love what you've done with the website. 
Uh, I'm chairman of a Churches Together organisation and I think I really need to raise the profile and I'd be great if you could do, uh, I'd be really grateful if you could do the website for me and it'd be even better if you could do it as a charitable gift. I thought I'm not having that. It's one thing to volunteer, it's something else to be asked. So I wrote back and said, well, in order for me to set up a website, I'm happy to do it, but you'll need to be clear about what you want it for, what you're going to put on it. I'll create the boxes, you need to fill them. By the way, it'll take me two full days to set it up and I'll charge you X. It wasn't a great deal of money, but it was not free. I haven't heard back from him since. And that's the thing, you see, is when things are free, people want them without really understanding why they want them. And it's kind of like the old adage, you know, give people an inch and they take a mile. But on the flip side of that is, if you offer to sell body, somebody a mile, they'll take an inch. I mean, a classic example of, of taking something that's free because it's free. I don't know whether you saw um, footage of the terrible disaster that's been in Mexico on the two coasts recently. And the news was showing pictures of people, desperate, no food, no water, looting shops. And there in the middle of this shot was this guy who came running out of a shop with a slide projector. Why on earth would you need a slide projector? He obviously had no idea what he was going to do with it, but because it was free, he'd take it. People are the strangest creatures. These golden rods are pretty much finished for the season as well, so I'll cut them down. The thing is, if you give your time for free, then sooner or later somebody's going to hear about it and hope that they'll get your time for free as well. That's exactly what happened with this, this guy from the Churches Together organisation. And the problem then is that if you do give your time for free, word gets out that there's a woman somewhere who does websites for free. And it won't be long before people are knocking on your door saying, I hear you do free websites, when can you do mine? And it goes from a charitable act to an expectation to a sense of entitlement. And when you turn around to people and say, well, no, I'm busy, or no, I've got bills to pay, they get a bit shirty. <sighs> Doing charitable things is fine, but you absolutely need to know where to draw the line. I mean, after all, if you're not going to value your own time, you can't expect other people to value it for you. There's a bunch of these maiden's armpits or whatever they're called here. I'm going to take these out. And in the process of digging up this stuff, I've managed to reveal some lovely little cyclamen. It's lovely. I mean, they're very pretty, but nobody could see them, or at least they couldn't. I think I'm going to move them. I may not have moved them very far, but I can at least see them now. I feel like I've been quite philosophical this week, but I guess the point of what I've told you is simply this. Whoever you are, wherever you are, doesn't matter how old or how young you are, there's always someone, somewhere, who's quite willing to take advantage of you for their own benefit. Luckily, I'm not a soft touch. Thanks for watching, and do join me next time in Titley's Busy Garden. Mm -hmm.